Quincy here. Great to have you. Welcome back to the Worship Team Training Show. It is so awesome to have you guys on board today. We have Sharice Williams, our awesome local worship leader, sitting in the hot seat. She's about ready to go, and we hope that you guys are about ready to go as well. My name is Brandon Dempsey. This is WorshipTeamTraining.com, and I'm a follower of Jesus and also happen to lead this wonderful ministry called WorshipTeamTraining.com, in which you can find our workshops our mentoring, and also our brand new Worship Team Training University. That's at WTTU.co. And I uh, just want to welcome all you guys. Thanks so much for coming in. Welcome to all of our Facebook viewers, our Periscope, and also you guys listening to us on the playback here with iTunes and also with our uh, Spreaker and iHeartRadio. Thanks, guys, so much for coming in. And if you're watching us by video or by playback, you can click on the links that we have in, on top inside of the uh, video title where it will take you to WTTU. You can find out more about us there. And what do we do? Well, that's just it. We train worship teams. We work with worship leaders just like you and your musicians, your pastors, your audio tech, media, you name it. And we come in and do a full weekend workshop that takes place over a Friday and a Saturday. So that way you're back ready to go for church again on Sunday. Let's see who we got hanging with us today. We got Terry. What's up, TV on Periscope? Who else is joining us on uh, Facebook Live? And, uh, and a guy, again, a guy. a guy. He's a guy. He is a guy. We thank you guys for coming on board and uh, enjoying the broadcast today. If this is your first time. We say welcome, welcome. And if you would, please hit us up in the comment window by typing in your name and the city or country of where you're from so we know who we are broadcasting with and hanging with today. Thanks so much for that. Uh, again, you can be sure to go back to worshipteentraining.com, worshipteentraining.com. I said that too fast. And you can find all of our workshops, mentoring program. Sharice right here actually has uh, graduated from our first semester, and I think she's, she's waiting to do the second, second semester. She also is a member of Worship Teen Training University. So we're going to hear from Sharice in just a bit about band, how to make your band bigger, what, what are some of the struggles and challenges that she is having and we invite you guys to take part in the conversation if you would all you need to do is just type in the comment window uh, by watching live or playback let us know what's up so that way we can address your question and get right to it uh, some things coming up down the pike that you want to be sure you catch this coming thursday matt mccoy from loop community is going to be here on the program this thursday that's wttu.co Matt is going to be going over Loop Community, their tracks, their services, also a discount special that you can get, as well as cool tips and tricks that you can do with multi-tracks that Loop Community provides. And they're awesome arrangers. they got a great, great program, and they have awesome, awesome people over there doing God's work. So we invite you guys to, to join us this coming Thursday at 11. You have to be a member a WTTU member to watch the program or listen by um, audio playback as well. So we invite you to go to WTTU.co and you can get all of the stuff there that you need to become a member. And also we have some updated news as well. We are working on a brand new website for that university and it's going to be launching in a few weeks from now. We're very, very excited. we got new webinars coming up. Kent Morris is going to be our next webinar coming in October about audio tech and visual. So you don't want to miss that one. If you're an audio tech person, this is going to be for you. You're a worship leader. You need some help. Kent is the man. We do broadcasts like this 11 a.m. Every, th every Tuesdays. And you can find us for worship leaders, pastors, musicians, singers, all you guys that are involved with worship ministry. So this is what we do. This is how we roll. So let's go and get right to it. We have Sharice Williams hailing from Michigan with her church. And we've had Sharice on a few times, and we had the opportunity to watch her grow as a worship leader and just to see the things that God's been doing through her. So really excited to hear about what she's doing today what things have come to be, and also looking into the future. So without further ado, everybody, please welcome Sharice Williams. How are you, Sharice? Doing well. How about you, Brandon? Doing good. It's so great to have you today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, it's great to have you back, as always, my sister. I mean, we go back. Probably, we do go back. <laughs> we go back. 
I was going to, we go back to the, not to the Ted Riley date, Teddy, Teddy Riley days. <laughs> Teddy remember that, Riley. Remember that, TD? So we got some fun happening over here. We're just talking about that New Jack stuff before everything started. If you guys don't know, hey, you need to learn your rap history. Hope that you guys are having a great time. And Sharice, it's so good to have you. Uh, tell us about your church again, like um, name a church, exactly the city, what you do, go for it. All right, well, I am a worship leader at Mitchum Chapel AME Church in Royal Oak, Michigan. And I've been having a leading worship, I don't know, 20 years now, before I knew it was called worship leading. <laughs> but uh, I've been doing it for a long time now. And, yeah. I, you know, I'm just, uh, just blessed that, you know, I've been chosen for this particular uh, gifting for the body of Christ has been an awesome um, experience of being a, a, a tremendous blessing to the body. And um, we are a small congregation of 50 um, or less members. So we're just trying to do the work right. of the Lord. All right, awesome. So like last week we had a worship leader here that had around, I don't know, I think Tim had something around two or three thousand people, and now, <laughs> seriously, and so now we have you worshiping around fifty people. So the whole point of these broadcasts and why we do it is because everybody's different. Every worship team is different. There's not a one size fit all, and, and you, I mean, have a definite experience of that, Sharice. Because tell us about your worship team. Yeah. So uh, my worship team is a worship team of one. <laughs> <laughs> The worship team of one, and I've had over the years, I've had uh, no more probably than one person join at a time, and yeah. then they served only for a short period of time and then moved on to something else. But um, yours truly, I lead worship each Sunday. Uh, for a while there, we didn't have a musician at all, and so I was leading solely with soundtracks. And uh, just over the last year, we've been able to uh, start leading with uh, pianists, so it's been right. great. That's a big deal. It is. It's huge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now, have you led worship bands before that, or been a part of bands that had a, a full band before you came to this church? Well, I, I mean, this is pretty much where I was born and raised. Okay. My mom used to be a pastor, That's and right. I've had the um, the privilege of joining other worship teams uh, temporarily, just singing with them. So I have been a part of a big band experience, but yeah. I haven't had it at my own home church. Okay, so so this baby's never been scarred, yeah. you know. <laughs> she doesn't have all the war stories that we do as as bands. I mean, but that's cool that's though, right. because right. But but um, so what's it like? I mean, when you had uh, led worship, participated with a larger band, and now you work with a smaller one, and that's all you've known for the whole time that you've been leading worship. Yeah, working with a, a large band, um, just in my limited experience, I don't know, I mean, at first, I think I was more starstruck than anything yeah. when I first uh, <laughs> had experience of worship um, with a, a real band, but all the moving parts uh, was something that just kind of blew my mind uh, right off, and then to go back mm -hmm. home and just say, wow, you know, I have a nice, a nice soundtrack here, this is awesome. <laughs> direct anyone everything's flowing just as it ought to <laughs> yeah but um you know that's something that you know i i really um aspire to you know to have all the different musicians in our church something that we've been really asking god for but are just waiting patiently for it to happen mm -hmm. awesome well and th there's a big difference between you know what you participated in and what you have now um what are and i i say this because there are a lot of worship bands that do what you do. There are a lot of worship bands that just have one musician or they just have tracks to work with. And right. we as, you know, churches that are in, let's say starting with the 100 to 200, you already may have a five or seven piece band. And you may be right. thinking to yourself, yeah, but I mean, we just need that one more person. Well, right here, Sharice, she, <laughs> yeah, she only has the one person. So, I mean, yeah, count yourself, yeah. count yourself blessed. Yeah, Seriously, absolutely. for those of you who think, yeah, but we need that one-ish person. You know what? Look, if Sharice can do this every week with just one player, then I mean, you know, your 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 God has um, not to say bless you more than Sharice. That's not true, but right. the fact that you're able to work with what you have, and so is Sharice. It's still the same playing field. We just had different absolutely. members of play, players on the team, 
So with that in mind, what are some of the what are some of the advantages that you have, Cherise, of of working small, like let's say you know tiny house versus the yeah. larger the larger kind of bands? Yeah, well, I think the first thing that comes to mind is scheduling is is um, pretty easy. <laughs> it's a breeze. They're always going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> scheduling is easy. Um, yeah, I mean, you rarely ever have to consider, especially when I was using solely soundtracks. Now that we have a, a pianist, you know, we he and I uh, meet regularly, but it's really easy. If we can't meet on our, our, our regularly scheduled day, which is Thursday every week, we meet on Wednesday. Hmm. And um, he and I obviously have a great communication uh, in terms of planning from week to week. Uh, even uh, changing songs is not a big deal. If we have to change songs on the spot, we can. Mm -hmm. And and that's a, a great benefit when you just have a, a small uh, two-piece band, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we we work pretty well together. Whenever we all we need something, if he forgets something, I usually have it, and, and vice versa. So it, it works well. Yeah, cool. All right, so let's dive into the challenges. What what are the challenges now in working with just one musician, or yeah. what you have currently in your church? Yeah, um, I guess what some of the, the challenge that we're facing now will probably be the tempo. Um, maintaining that tempo. Mm. Uh, I tend to sing slow, I think, sometimes, and so I find that, <laughs> that I can drag a song, and because we don't have a percussionist, uh, we have people in the congregation who have tambourines or sticks, and so they're trying to help us keep the, the tempo of the song, but it can get really muddy quickly if um, people don't know exactly where you are. <laughs> so on any given Sunday, I have a friend of mine who's actually working the audio in the back, and she's constantly looking at me, asking me if I want her to pick up the sticks to help keep the tempo because you can feel it when people begin to, to move away from the, the, the tempo of the song. Right. So Number that, one <laughs> issue. <laughs> so we had somebody um, here, thanks for the Philippines, had asked, you know, are you, have you tried training musicians? You just mentioned that you had, you just had one person that um, kept the sticks or tambourine. Have you tried training them? Yes, yeah, so we have um, our congregation, I don't want to say relatively young, but we do have them started out on things like uh, the tambourine and the sticks. And our our musician who's working with us, or our pianist, he teaches music also. Hmm. So we do have some of our youth that are taking uh, instrumental practice, if you will, with different type of um, instruments. They're learning how to play. But um, none of them are quite in the place yet where they're really ready to really join the worship team, but they are working on their craft. Mm. So we're just waiting for them to um, kind of be in better position. But we do have a children's choir, so I would say we're training little worship leaders. Uh, wow, usually. that's awesome. So, like, um, what do they function? Um, like, how regular are, are the children? In your service. Yes, so yes, our ch our children um, lead every third Sunday of the month. Cool. So um, I rehearse with them three times a month, twice after church on Sundays, like the first and second Sunday, and then we have a rehearsal during the week to prepare them for their Sunday that they're leading. That is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So so we're working, doing what we can with what we have. Absolutely. All right. So tempo problems between you and the pianist. Um, what is that like when you're trying to lead worship? How do you get that person on track? Because, I mean, everybody here can agree that there are tempo problems somewhere in your band. Even if you do use a click track, there's always somebody that's behind. <laughs> so when you're, when you're leading worship series, how do you handle that? I usually um, I'll stick the mic on the, on the holder and I'll get my hands going <laughs> so that people can understand because that's the that's yeah. The best I can do in terms of directing from the position that I'm in. But what if it's and a slow? Then, what if it's a slow song? Do you, you, and then a slow song. You clap you also. Just, you know, <laughs> we will, and <laughs> and I'll um, I'll give my musician kind of my eye, and he and I will laugh, but he knows what I'm doing. Then once we get to the chorus, we'll kind of get our tempo back yeah. together or back in sync. Yeah. 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 It's tough. No kidding. <laughs> so she's clapping. She's like. Bring that beat back, you know. Right, bring it back. <laughs> um, so, have you have you guys considered? I know we talked a little bit about this before, but have you considered using some sort of a? This is a perfect opportunity, though, 
for you guys to use a click track, to use some kind of a loop to help fill in. You mentioned about percussion. That, in my mind, that's the first thing that I would go to. What about yours? Why not? Absolutely no. You, I mean, you hit it right, right on the nail that, or the mm. nail on the head. Yeah, there you <laughs> because, go. Because um, just in um, our last uh, few rehearsals that we've had, we've been working with. I don't know if it's so much of a, a beat that um, my musician has kind of created himself, but we've been talking about um, Ableton, yeah. trying to see if that was something we wanted to do, trying to figure out if it's in our budget, and um, just really acknowledging that we need. Uh, a way to a better way to keep tempo because we have a lot of upbeat songs mm. that we really like to do but are challenged because we don't want to lose tempo in those particular songs <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> man, just don't play or just <laughs> play when i yeah. point at you you know, like mr holland's opus you know when i point at you that's when you play the bass drum right all right, right um all right so there is an easier way. I mean, uh, you don't have to. You don't have to use Ableton Live because I mean it's a great program. Don't get me wrong. I, mm -hmm. I have experience in it, but not everybody can understand it. And right. it does take it does take a learning curve. Once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. They made the program a lot easier when it first came out, which was eons ago. But I will say that guys like Loop Community. It's a free player. Uh, they have their own free program that you can get for iPad. And I think it's uh, also for um, iPhone, and it's called uh, Looptimus and um, okay. Optimus. And th okay. it comes with just regular, it's, it's your regular uh, download app for your phone, for your tablet. But they also have, uh, like the, opt like the uh, Looptimus has a foot control switch that you can get as well. So when you're leading worship, you can change sections by, with your feet. The pianist can do that as well, or the drummer, guitar player. Uh, in your case, it's just pianist, you know, but they can right. try with their feet. But um, the downloadable tracks are very easy because you can upload those into this program. Very easy to tweak. You can mute all the other different instruments, and if you just want percussion, you can do percussion. You can rearrange the intro, the verse, the chorus, however that you want. And also, they have key selections, too. That's something new that Matt... McCoy, the founder of Luke Community, has been working on. Uh, you can raise the key up or you can bring it down. And uh, for guys, those of you watching right now, if you join us on Thursday, Matt will give you guys a special promo coupon that you can use to get a special off on, the, on their tracks that they want to offer. So that's com this coming Thursday. Don't miss it. Especially you guys, WTTU members, you don't want to miss it. Sharice, you're going to be with us too. So we'll give you that, we'll give you that incentive. Um, but by playing with, I mean, let me just ask you this, what's the hesitation in not doing it earlier? Is it because, I know you just got a piano player, but some worship leaders are a little bit, uh, a little bit intimidated in introducing a track because they're afraid, will the musician keep up? Is that for your case too? Right, um, I don't know if it's so much that he, he wouldn't keep up, <laughs> but I think for us, we were so uh, concerned about making sure that our dynamic between one another was good before we started introducing another piece into the team. <laughs> right. And so we wanted to make sure that he and I were vibing really well during rehearsal time and then of course on Sunday mornings when we were actually le leading. So now we were just to the point that we were ready to start talking about taking that next step. So this, I mean, this web, uh, webcast is right on time for us. Yeah. Okay, so and does he have like does he have a keyboard like a just a regular synthesizer keyboard? Yes, he has a really nice keyboard actually. Okay. So it has all the little tools and buttons and whistles and things. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Well then, does he and he knows how to work it well? Yes, he does. Okay, that's the number one thing that I will suggest for all you worship bands out there to know your equipment because a lot of there's a lot of churches that have. Probably, Tony says this all the time, the same thing with Rich Kirkpatrick. The church has the, probably the most best instruments and sound equipment in the whole town. If you go play any other secular place around the city, you're not going to find as good as equipment as what we do. So take advantage of it. Um, for keyboard players, know your synthesizer. So like your keyboard, your pianist, you can actually hook up, of course, your synth to a, a MacBook Pro or whatever laptop that you use. 
and yeah. you can access certain sounds. Um, I mean, we use main stage, which a lot of worship bands use, and it's great. You can trigger certain loops, but you can also trigger like, and I mean like arpeggiations, uh, different sounds. You can do a combi sound uh, between what's coming out of the laptop and also what's coming out of your actual synth board. So there's a lot of great interplay that you can have, but you have to know the keyboard well. And I think for you, Sharice, as well, and other worship leaders, it is important that you guys learn what your keyboards can do and what they can't do based on the knowledge of their instrument. So it, it wouldn't be fair for me to ask, you know, Terry, who's watching right now, um, hey, Terry, can you play in a part, uh, uh, can you arpeggiate those chords in a harp type sound with some delay? If he doesn't know the first thing about what delay is, or even that word arpeggiation that I just said, and arpeggiation means that you take a chord apart, instead of playing it as a stack chord, you play the notes independently. That's arpeggiating. But if he doesn't know what that means, then he can, I can't expect him to deliver it. And so that's, that's on a musical side, but on the technical side, he has to learn how to make that keyboard work. So are, is there a way, Sharice, that you and your pianist can work together to explore that keyboard and just to find out what are some good things that it can do to benefit you? Yeah, no, I mean, that's something great to point out because I think during rehearsal time, we don't really spend time focusing on that particular instrument. Obviously, yeah. we're planning for the weeks ahead and uh, we may touch on the issue of drums for a moment, just say, hey, maybe we can find, uh, you know, um, some drums to go with this particular song we're working on. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and that's really as far as our conversation will go in that direction. So um, this is something that we could, we so, could uh, focus on during our rehearsal time. Okay, so you mentioned rehearsal time. So how much, how much rehearsal time do you spend total in one evening? Or morning, whatever. Oh uh, no! In the evening, we probably rehearse an hour and a half, two hours tops. Okay, an hour and a half, two hours tops. How many songs do you have rehearsing? Uh, four. So you spend <laughs> four. You spend two hours on four songs. Yep. So that's a song for thirty minutes. Yeah, usually like if we're, and most of the time it's not necessarily the songs that we're going to do on Sunday, but we keep uh, songs kind of on standby, if you will, songs that we're learning, maybe I should say. Okay. So we, we may hit different songs trying to see if we want to rotate them in or out or if they're ready and things like okay. that. All right, so then roughly we're talking 20 minutes per song is what you spend. Mm -hmm. Because you may do yeah. four songs and then maybe two or three new songs to get it going, right? Yeah, and we may have some dialogue, anything special that's coming up that we need to plan for. Things like that. Okay, so, so now we're talking. So now we're talking 15 minutes per song. <laughs> okay, yeah, you see how the okay. time keeps going down. Yeah. Now absolutely. this is what happens. I'm bringing this out because this is what happens to most of you. You waste mm -hmm. time during rehearsal. I'm saying yeah. it. You, okay, so now here's the question: How much do you? How much does your pianist practice at home during the week? That, well. I don't know. I mean, I know I spend time rehearsing. <laughs> you do? I do. I do rehearse. And the funny thing about it is, um, because I work a day job, um, most of my rehearsal time uh, comes with the headphones in my ears when I'm at work. And so I'm running over the new songs that are coming, okay. trying to re remember lyrics, things like that. I'll um, buy that for 10 bucks. I'll buy that for 10 bucks. Yeah, I, it's, it's for real. 10 bucks. I know it's real. <laughs> I know. I know it's real. Mm -hmm. So then your pianist, how much do, does he practice? Honestly, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. You, gotta, you need to find out. Yeah. Have you, have you asked a tough question? How much time do you practice? I don't ask him the tough questions. I think um, I've been in honeymoon stage for a while here at Brandon because we didn't have anybody. Oh, okay, so don't want to <laughs> upset the piano player. Are you paying him or is he volunteer? You know, he, he's paid. Okay, so if he's paid, you have no reason then. Yummy, what's up? She says, personal rehearsal is prep and preparation is crucial. Sharice, I love you. I know you do. You know that. If you're paying this guy, there is no question why you should not ask him how much are you practicing. Yeah. Right? You're paying the guy. Okay? Absolutely. You're paying him not to slow down. Right. You're paying him to know the songs during rehearsal. Am I speaking truth? 
people? What's up, Michelle? Says this, if someone's, <laughs> she says this, if someone is getting paid, then you can monitor their practice time. And monitor, does that mean sticking microphones on the walls of where they live and cameras and, you know, I'm going to be watching you this week to make it sure. No, but if you're paying them, if you're paying them, it is, it is critical then. It's on you, worship leader. It's on you, Sharice. you got to be following up. you got to know. You're right. Yeah. You know, I'm, this is tough love. You know that. I know it is. But it's to make you better. If we don't ask these questions to make better, then, then what are we doing, right? right I mean, right. seriously, you're just paying money for what? We're, I mean, seriously. Bye. Okay, so, Bye. Yummy, what's up, Yummy? She's, yummy, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. She says, paid or volunteered, there should be clearly stated expectations um, regarding preparation. Exactly. So, when you come to the worship team, and this is one of the toughest things to do. You're right, Michelle. Thanks for that. Uh, this is one of the most toughest things to do is to... Uh, let's put it this way: make the expectation clear each week, and, right. and say, "And say, look, guys, you need to know your music before you come to rehearsal. I expect each person. This is what I tell my team: I expect you to work at least ten minutes per day, or ten minutes. You know, even if it's every other day, you miss one. I mean, that happens to me too. But ten minutes per day is not hard. It's just." Why are you not creating time for it? Because you fill it up with everything else, and then we always think, yeah, but, but, and we excuse it, excuse it, excuse it, excuse it. But the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm harping is there's two, there's two things. Number one, it slows down your rehearsal time. You're not being productive with it, and you're not being productive with everybody else. Number two, you ready for number two? Number two, you cannot learn new things like loops, drum tracks, keyboards, because it's so much taken of your space of trying to figure out the songs that you should have been rehearsing. This is what I do. When my guitar players look at me and they say, hey, Brandon, um, how does this one song go? I don't tell them. I just say, the church right in front of you. And, they're, and I laugh and I say, hey, you know, that little white piece of paper thing with black dots over it? You know, it's right <laughs> over there. And they laugh because they know what I'm talking about. But if I am to stop time and say, okay, this is the G chord. Oh, yeah. Now, we haven't discussed what the E minor chord is yet. I'm giving a private lesson. And if I'm paying other people in the band, it's not worth their pay to take up their time and volunteers. It's not fair for them. So, Sharice, I'm encouraging you to get with your pianist, and you just simply ask them, hey, you know what? I just We want to take things up. We want to step it up a notch. This is how you can ask, your, um, ask and make those expectations clear to your players. Go to them and Sharice. Go to him and just say, hey, we're wanting, to, we're wanting to take a step up. And then you say, we're wanting to take a step up. So are you increasing your practice time? And how much are you practicing? We got, hey, we got a worship team member. What's up? <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. Does she practice also? Because, I mean, she's coming into the show. She's got to practice. <laughs> All right? She's got to be playing something if she's going to be here. <laughs> That's awesome, Yumi. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. My little boys were doing that last week, and I was kind of, you know. Right. So I get it. It's all good. Um, so, but tell them, look, we want to take a step up in our music. I'm going over our time, by the way, guys. I'm sorry. It's like past 11:30, and we usually end the show by now. So I hope you're. <laughs> is everybody good with this? You like this so far? Just tell me no, and I'll shut it off. Okay. Everybody's liking it. Thanks, TD, my man. Other people on Periscope, thanks. I don't hear anything Facebook Live. We're going to shut you down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you want to say, look, I want to take it. I want to take it step up. Right. And I, I just like to ask the question, how much time are you practicing each day or each week? I, that's how I ask it. So that way if they say, yeah, well, you know, I'm only rehearsing, only practicing uh, like on Fridays. Then I encourage them to say, well, hey, do you think you can take that up a notch and maybe do, you know, three days a week? You want to meet people where they're at. You don't want to just come to a person and say, yeah, well, now you've got to start practicing every day or you're not going to be on the team. Well, the thing right. is, you don't know what's going on in that other person's life. You don't, you don't know what they may be going through. Bradley was up in Periscope. I know where Bradley lives, and he practices all the time what's up. Um, but, you know, I know if Tony was here, Tony would say that's no excuse because if you are a musician, it's like any other position in the church – you volunteer, you pay, it's your responsibility to practice, absolutely. and that's absolutely right. It's my responsibility to practice every day. 
So ask that tough question and then just say, look, you know, now what we want to do is we want to shape our, our, our rehearsal time so that way we're actually rehearsing what we practice from home. That's the key. And if you can right. do that, if you can do that, I guarantee you, Sharice, if you're practicing at home, both of you, and you come on rehearsal worship teams, I guarantee you, you'll start spending less time on songs during rehearsal. You'll start finding more things to do, which will, thank you, Bradley, you will spend more time on, on things like, hey, let's practice how to exit from one song and entering to another. Let's work on the transitions. Yes. Let's work Those on... Am I right? Because you can never get some well, during you're, the week. You're spot oh my gosh! It's because well, how did, how does this how does this song I'm telling you all the time. <laughs> how does this song go? And you're like, well, we can never talk about key changes because I got five guitar players that don't know their music. Yeah, you know, yeah. and look, I don't mean to get so revved up, but this is this is real. And you worship leaders know what I'm talking about, but you're not doing anything about it. It doesn't matter the excuse. You got to go in and say, "Look, guys, this is to make you better. Don't be afraid about people getting what offended because you're asking yeah. for them to do a job that they signed up to do. That's ridiculous. Just look. Sorry. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> just go to you're them. Passionate. You're I'm telling you, man. It, yes, because it's <laughs> because it's passionate for me. Because if I don't do it, how can I expect my team to do it? If I don't practice, how can I stand up there each week and say, well, you should practice? Then I'm the one picking the speck in my brother's eye. I'm not carrying my own weight. And if I'm not carrying my own weight, if I miss a song, then it's my responsibility to say, you know what? We're not going to do this song because I don't know it well, and we're just going to remove it and put in something else instead. It's my call, and it's my fault if I don't do it. That is the responsibility that all of us bear as worship leaders. That's it. So do this take the love that you if you love your worship team it's look it's just like forgive me for the analogy but it's like loving your children if you spare the rod you don't love the child it's so true if you spare the rod with your worship team you really don't love them if you're not saying to them hey i want you to practice hey we're going to take a step up hey we're going to work on new things hey we're going to limit to only i'm telling you you practice during the week five to ten minutes is too long 10 minutes is too long. Five to seven minutes per song is about what we spend. And then we move on to the next one. We take another five minutes, move on to the next one. Thanks, Michelle. Love you. Shelly Kahn, what's up? Thank you for that. You know, it's like old when you're in the old choir days or band, stage band days back in school. That's what your directors did, didn't they? They ran through a song yeah. for like two minutes and said, okay, put that away. We're going to do something new. Because the mind has a way of grabbing quick information. And it's laborious to spend 15 minutes to 30 minutes on one song that they're going to that they're going to forget anyway before Sunday because why they hadn't practiced and then they forget it because they're not making notes in their music. So if you can start manage, managing your time, and you know what, it's going to be tough love. I know for a lot of you, Sharice, as well. But you're going to have to institute it and say, okay, look, it's been seven minutes. Let's move on to the next song. You're going to have people who are going to look at you. Your pianist may look at you. And go what? You know, like, but we got, but we, but we didn't got, you know, just like the kid when you tell your when you tell your child, you know, make your bed. He's like, but but what? What? You same thing. Five minutes, seven minutes, work it out. Then it's done. Put it away. Go to the next song. Because if you don't do it, you're leaving all the other uninterrupted time to be interrupted by things that are going to take up your rehearsal. Like again, spending time with learning what your synth can do. Your multi tracks. Um, Luke community, sorry, um, they, you know, and your your songs, your tempos, um, you know, we did this too. Like when when we spent a lot of time in working with our team, and we put things away, we would actually practice tempos instead of just practicing the song. We'd say, you know what, let's put this song uh, ten beats under and see what kind of a different feel it's got. Because ten beats away can make a huge difference in how you deliver that song. The same thing by doing it in a different key and say, you know what, we're used to doing it in G all the time. Let's knock this down in E. Um, but you have you have room to create. Okay. Now, now, guys, look, the stuff that I'm sharing with you right now is is not new. This stuff has been covered by ageless and timeless uh, thousands of people. Um, but I'm telling you, this is something that I am fiery about 
uh, this, this is the same thing that we discuss within our workshops. If we come to your church and work with your band, this is it. I got a whole book that I teach this stuff. I've also brought Sharice through our mentoring program that does the same thing, but on a personal level. And then also the university program, we have articles, tons of articles and videos that do this stuff. So if you want more, go there. Sharice, um, can you commit to have the tough love but kind conversation with your musician and take it a step up? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to commit to that. Absolutely. All right. You heard her right here. Thousands of people are watching. Okay. All right. So when we come back, <laughs> we're going to ask that question. So Bradley says this. He says, we're struggling with the same things. People show up for rehearsal wanting to practice. I know. Right. This is not, this is not little, this is not soccer little league, you know, right. and right. even, and even there you practice, you know? So anyway, I love it. Sharice, thank you for being real, bringing it, being transparent and humble. Appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. We got a little delay, but it's normal there. Uh, so we thank Sharice for coming on board. It's great to have her this morning. Sharice, love you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Awesome. And we're going to have Sharice back. She's going to give us a progress report update. Yes, I will. Of what's, of what's happening. Um, Barry's got you scheduled coming up, I think, sometime next year because we have – um, guests uh, throughout the rest of this year covered, um, but on to the next person sitting in the hot chair next week. <laughs> so Yummy just said, you got this, Sharice. That's what she said on Periscope. She's got your back. So awesome. Guys, look, if you want more of what we're doing, simply go to worshipteentraining.com. Find out what we can do for you by a workshop that we come to you, to your church, or a regional workshop. We can go to your whole city. We're doing one in Janesville, Wisconsin. October 13th and 14th. We have another one scheduled after that, and we got more. You can go to our events page at worshipteentraining.com. If you're interested in our university program, find the link in the subject header of this video, wttu.co. Go there because you will find more articles and videos on this very topic that is going to help in um, – it's going to help infuse what you and your band can do. Guys, love you. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you this, this coming Thursday with Matt McCoy, Luke Community. It's going to be a lot of fun, and then we'll see you on our next Tuesday show. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Have an awesome day. We love you. See you very soon.